Nebraska's corn crop is rated 76% good to excellent, according to the latest report from Nebraska's National Agricultural Statistics Service. That percentage is the same as a week ago. 17% of the crop is dented, two points behind the state's five-year average. As we approach the home stretch of the growing season, this week we talked with Nebraska Extension SWAT Ermock about scheduling the final irrigation of the year. SWAT leads the Nebraska Ag Water Management Network and spoke with us Wednesday morning here on UNL's East Campus about the corn crop's water needs. Corn crop water, uh, corn water requirement is a function of several different variables, including climate, uh, soil type, uh, hybrid and, and uh, management practices, but primarily uh, corn uh, physiological stages also uh, impact the crop oil requirement. Climate variables are primarily uh, drive uh, irrigation requirement, solar radiation, temperature, uh, wind speed, uh, vapor pressure deficit, and so on. As long as the corn continues its physiological functions, it needs water to, to continue that, that uh, uh, function. I know it's varying across the state, but and even within counties, I'm sure, but how much water would crops need, would corn crops need at about this time of the year? You know, even in the same location, the planting time can, can change from one field to another, and then growth rate of the same crop in the same location can change uh, from one field to another. But overall, um, uh, as an example for corn, uh, from our five stage uh, to physiological maturity, uh, it takes about three and a half to four inches of water to finish that, that corn crop all the way to physiological maturity. Why is it important to focus on correctly timing the last irrigation of the season? Well, it is important for several different reasons. Uh, and one of them is, of course, reducing the irrigation uh, water application is one of our goals to um, increase our efficiency and, and, and associated, associated uh, benefits such as reducing nitrogen, potential nitrogen leaching to the uh, soil profile and then to other water resources, uh, groundwater and surface water resources, uh, saving energy uh, and, and other benefits. But also to maintain a proper uh, soil moisture level in the crop blue zone for maximum and most efficient water and nutrient uptake. So these are some of the uh, most benefits. So can you give me an example of a situation uh, with X percent in the profile and at X stage in the growing season, how much uh, more water the crop would need when you might be able to schedule the last irrigation? So let's take an example for corn crop. Let's say it's at R5 stage as an example. Um, if it takes three and a half or four inches, between three and a half and, and four inches to uh, take this corn crop from R5 to physiological maturity. Um, and if we are implementing some kind of technology to monitor soil moisture in the soil profile, we know exactly how much water we have in the soil profile. And then of course we monitor precipitation uh, uh, from rain gauges or other, other, other sources. So it takes four inches to, take, to go from R5 to physiological maturity and then we know how much we have through soil moisture sensing devices and then let's assume we have two inches in the soil profile available soil moisture then then we can monitor those two components over time and make a decision uh, how much you know when to finish that uh, uh, season and then make the decision on the last irrigation of the, of the season. Is the goal to leave some water in the profile? Actually the goal is perhaps it is to leave some but minimal amount of water uh, to deplete as much as possible and I will suggest perhaps deplete by 60 to 70 percent of the available water so that we can keep that available uh, profile or the deficit in the profile uh, to be able to store uh, potential wintertime off-season precipitation uh, for the next grow growing season. If you look at corn there is diminishing return as the season goes along with each inch of water applied, correct? That is correct. How much does it differ in soybeans? For soybean, actually it is very similar to corn. After certain threshold, after certain irrigation application, uh, there is a diminishing return. In fact, the diminishing return curve, it's not stable. Uh, it actually declines after certain threshold. And those values declining or uh, diminishing return 
values are different for corn and soybean, uh, but we have very good ideas on what those numbers are for different locations in the state. On the Market Journal website, we'll link to more information about the Nebraska Ag Water Management Network and scheduling the final irrigation of the year.